this video is for those of you that are struggling with making and understanding standard curves. I already did one here based on your guys' PCR gel. Uh, this image down here is going to show you, number one, the marker, the NEB1 kilobase marker that we're working with in this lab. Uh, next to that image, I put a, a ruler, and you want to make the measurements in millimeters. And in this last part of the graphic is the actual gel image. So one thing to note first is that these bands here on this ladder will always correspond to the bands of your ladder in your gel. Basically what you want to do is take this ladder with this known amount of base pairs and you want to figure out how large this size is, which is your PCR product, or it could be extraction or any other sample. So for example, this first line here, I drew a yellow line. This is uh, lining up with the 10,000 kilobase pair fragment in the ladder, and this is the associated one on your gel. Now the next band would probably be around here. It's a little too close to discern where it is, I think, on this graph but that would be your 8,000. The next line would be your 6,000, which is here, uh, your 5,000 band here, which on the gel is here, <laughs> and so on and so forth. If you're having trouble recognizing these bands, there's bands that will always show up really bright. So that one, that would be the 10,000 base pair band, which is your first band, the 3,000 base pair band, which would be the band here, and then you can look at the 1,000 band, which is here, and then the 500 band, which is here. Those four bands are usually the brightest, and then you can just try to discern what the ones, what the sizes in between these are. Now, when you make a standard curve, what you have to do is make a data table like this up here. Um, I filled out this distance migrated table, but normally it would be blank, and you would just start with a table like this. Okay. But to save some time, I already filled in measurements. Now, what you would do is at this 10,000 base pair fragment, you want to know how far it migrated from this well. So you would take your ruler, put the zero next to this, in the middle of this blank spot here, which is where you load your sample. And then you would just measure in millimeters the distance to this first band. Uh, if you can't discern the band, measure it from the thickest part of it. So this one here noted in this yellow line would be about 31 millimeters. So what you would do is at this 10,000 base pair up here in this data table, you would just write 31. And then you'd measure every individual band from there. So this next to the 800, then the 600, 500, whatever bands you can discern, you want to measure from the well to that point. Uh, then you would fill out the associated distance here in this column A, or the first column, next to the associated base pair size. So when you have this data, all you want to do is select all of the data that you have. And then you want to go to Insert uh, Scatter Plot. So this rec by recommended charts, you would just click this uh, graph with dots on it, and then you would just do this first scatter plot here. Okay. And you see that this another image appears here. I'm gonna redo this image here uh, so that you guys know how to do this. Now you have this dotted line, and you could draw a line to this, but it won't be as accurate. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make this logarithmic, this y-axis. So you would just click this chart area, right click, and then you want to go to Format Axis. This little option bar should appear on the right. And you just want to tick this thing called Logarithmic Scale under Axis Options. Okay, And that'll change your Y axis to Logarithmic, which means it'll go from 1 to 10 in the first box. It'll exponentially go from 10 to 100 in the next box, and then to 1,000, and then to 10,000. That makes it easier to read your chart. You don't have to change the X axis, but make sure you do this for the Y axis. Now, next thing you want to do is just click on any dot, and it should highlight all their data points. You just want to right-click on them, and then go to Add Trend Line, and then it'll this line will automatically appear. Uh, you click the exponential line, since this is an exponential increase, and then you want to display the equation on the chart, and this little equation should appear here. These two images are identical, so I'm just going to delete this one. Now, if you look at the equation that it shows, this is the equation you're going to use to calculate any other distance to get the base pair size. So I already did that in this Excel file here in this equation. Um, Excel has the ability to solve formulas for you. So if you want to know how to do that, you just type equals uh, 
21,087 times exp and then you have to put in this equation here um, and a21 is just referring to this cell here that i use for the unknown this particular band here i measured to be 92 millimeters from this well so i just typed in 92 here and it automatically solves it for you if your band only migrated 55 the exo formula will fill it out for you it saves you the headache of having to calculate it yourself um, you don't need to use this feature but it's just something that will save you some time. You can actually double check your calculations and if it makes logical sense in that if it did migrate 93 and it is 615, uh, 93 falls in between these two values. So your base pair size should fall in between these values. So if you look here, 615, 93 is 615 and it falls in between these. That's how you know you did your standard curve correctly. That actually sums it up for how to make a standard curve in Excel. From here on out, you can do it this way and just include these kinds of graphics and tables inside your lab notebook or lab summary. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me.